Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Sarah Rodriguez. I'm the Director of Member Engagement here for ASABE staff. Uh, we are holding this foundation member hour. Uh, our hosts are Liz Metz, the Director of Development here on staff, and Maury Saul, the Foundation President. Uh, please take it away, Liz. Very good. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Over the next hour, we're going to share a little bit about ourselves, some um, foundation basics, what we're thinking of the direction for the future, and most importantly, the benefit to you and how to get involved. And just some quick housekeeping mute, if you could please add questions to the chat at any time, and we'll have some time for a discussion toward the end of our session. We know those tuning in have been supporting the society and the foundation in the same ways for many, many years, and we're super thankful for that. Hopefully after this next hour, you'll have more information about the foundation and can help us communicate to others that it exists, how it works, and how you can help us expand our relationships and impact so that we can provide impact to the world. So we'll go through introductions, foundations, basics, direction for the future, member benefits, your role, questions, and then we'll wrap up today. So I'll get started with myself. I'm Liz Metz. I've been with ASABE staff since April of this year, so past the seventh month mark. A Northwest Indiana farm girl. Grew up in Northwest Indiana on a family farm, and my professional career has been spent in resource development and operations specific to the 501c3 space for a little more than 20 years. And joining me today is Maurice Holt, current president of the ASAD Foundation. Thanks, Liz. I'm really happy to be with you today and look forward to sharing some of the foundation future plans. Excellent. So let's get started with a bit of background. Maury, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, the mission of the ASAB Foundation, and the impact you're hoping to make? Yeah, of course. So I grew up in Northwest Iowa, and I'm a farm boy, too. I ended up at Iowa State and got my BS in 79. And then later on in my career, I got an MBA from St. Ambrose in St. Ambrose University in Davenport, Iowa. I, for about 40 plus years, I've been in the farm equipment design, development, and manufacturing, and ended as the president and managing director of engineering at Kloss Omaha. It was a role I really never expected I would have, and I credit much of my network, including all my ASIB uh, colleagues, for giving me a lot of the opportunities along the path. I've been an ASAB member for about 26 years now and have been involved in many of the committees um, and served on the board, society board and the foundation board as trustee. And then later in 18 and 19, I was the president of the society. And now I'm happy to be the president of the foundation. So going on, uh, since the inception of our foundation, our mission has always been to grow the financial resources to support the society. But in 2020 through 23, under the leadership of Lalit Verma, the past, the recent past president of the foundation and the past board, a new mission statement, uh, mission and vision statement was established, which better aligned with the society's ad of the Strategic Initiative Council. The addition of growing and stewarding relationships is a significant change in an ad. It adds more responsibility now to the foundation. We still have a need to provide financial support and to take care of managing current assets, but we now must also look more outward to other organizations to help find more support for our society. This is a very important change that we'll talk about more later. It has a significant impact on the future plans. But before we get into that, I'd like to ground everybody again with a few foundation basics. Uh, for those who've been in the foundation, you know this, but for those who may be uh, coming in for the outside, it's a little, it's a good starter. So uh, the, our society was founded back in 1907, 
but the foundation itself wasn't really established until 87. Uh, at N86, uh, due to federal laws around nonprofits and foundations, it was decided that new structures were needed and leadership at that time wanted to put more energy behind the foundation. Thus, we have a foundation. So they brought along 14 awards to start the foundation that were already in the society. The foundation management structure has stayed stable over the last, over all these years and has managed the very well via the board of trustees. Today, I'm very appreciative of all the trustees over the years as they have grown the foundation to support over 20, support 28 awards, four scholarships, 17 competitions, and 16 special projects. So the Foundation Board of Trustees, on behalf of our members, now manage 65 funds. 48 of these have been endowed funds. And just to be clear, the 48 fund funds were created as a result of members stepping up and providing major funding to endow these. Today, an endowed fund requires at least 50,000 to get started. So this is a major contribution by many before us that we are very grateful for. The interest in the investment gains from these funds provide a revenue stream that pays for many awards and the respective administrative cost. Our duty as a foundation continues to safeguard all of our funds and manage their growth on behalf of donors and the society and the perpetuity. Again, we are so grateful for these contributions and we thank the donors. Can't thank them enough. Our current foundation valuation is over $6 million today. Let's see what the stock market does in the future. As this might seem large, I wanna point out that many individual contributions have been made over the years that are also very important. <clears throat> many of our capital funds have a shorter lifespan and count on these smaller contributions to continue. Notable funds include the Give Back Fund, where we support humanitarian efforts, or the Keys Fund, which really supports kindergarten through 12th grade education. And our newest one is the CBSI Fund, which supports the Circular Bioeconomy Systems Institute activities. There are so many different funds and I've had a fantastic time thus far learning the nuances and differences of them. Something that's come to light is a need to map out how our members can come to us asking for resources. So look for more of that in the future uh, to help a, a member decide where to submit their idea for funding from these foundation funds. So with all of our funds and activities, we're focusing on empowering the future generations of ag and biological engineers. We want to fuel their innovation and build a sustainable future. Our goal is to engage more stakeholders, both internally and externally, to the society, to the society who have an interest in investing in those same endeavors. I love the word invest. It speaks to an engagement in our mission, engagement in the impact that we have. Often our experience with fundraising is transactional, purchasing tickets to an event, silent auctions, golf outings and the like. And don't get me wrong, these are incredible vehicles to share our story and the impact we wanna make. But our focus is to build a program that showcases a strong strategy for folks to invest in, to feel a part of, to champion, to personally own as their contribution to the world. Our approach is multifaceted, focusing on aligning the work of the society with the funding goals of corporate partners and grant-making organizations, as well as encouraging individuals to engage with and invest in ASABE endeavors. We really try to foster relationships with our donors, keeping them engaged, and an important part of that is keeping folks informed about the impact. And so you'll see more of that moving forward. So it's so important to keep the communication. I wish to add that we're working closely with the ASAB councils to understand their needs as well. 
Just last week, the Society and the Foundation hosted the Board of Trustees in New Holland, Pennsylvania, and we spent an entire day on strategic discussions. Uh, this will help us develop more fundraising efforts at the Foundation, particularly as we think of external society support. We want to provide more education, success stories to you while providing better methods in managing relationships. It's truly an exciting time for the foundation and the society. Looking ahead, Maury, what are some of the resources members can enjoy from the foundation? Liz, I think the key word is more. Uh, we want to support awards more, student competitions more, scholarships and funding with more new ideas. We are working on developing an infrastructure for more relationship building, cross-discipline networks, and st strategic support for the special projects. This provides a lot of opportunity, right, Liz? Opportunity is another great word. Sometimes we can frame this as challenges, but I like to see the glass half full. So opportunities that I really wanna lean into as we make this journey in the coming year is member education. Understanding how a financial gift to the foundation supports members and collaborative opportunities. Your dollars are going through the foundation to make impact. Building a culture of philanthropy rather than transactional giving around shared values and increasing impact on our world. We also wanna lean into general education around agricultural and biological engineering. We support a multitude of schools of thought, I'm learning, in support of our vision, which is shared between the society and the foundation, a world where all have the food, water, energy, fiber, and safe environment needed to thrive. So all of our efforts are toward that vision. Maury mentioned building a network of relationships, and so we're working on a pilot ambassador program that will leverage the networks of our current members and their connections to get more folks and more companies and grant making organizations interested in the work that the foundation is supporting. And then closing the loop on that communication piece, reporting back to you as donors, what is the impact that you've made, producing a published annual report that will have a donor honor roll, success stories, and metrics that will speak to the number of lives changed or whatever those outcomes are decided by those project proposals. So right now, uh, it's November, we're in the season of traditional year-end philanthropy. And I'd like more to share a little bit about how you can help right now. So right now, <clears throat> I'm very excited about our current Giving Tuesday program we've titled the Past President's Challenge. As a past president, Myself, I reached out to 32 living past presidents for the opportunity to give to the foundation and to encourage others to match their giving this year. Our past presidents have given so much in their past time and energy to the so the so maybe that's not And they continue today by setting an example of giving. Collectively, as of today, the past presidents have donated more than $25,000 since the beginning of September to initiate our Giving Tuesday program. I can't thank them enough for their continued support and leadership. Coupled with the annual match from the foundation earnings, each dollar donated now and to the end of December will be doubled up to $75,000. Donors can choose their direct, where they wish to put their donations. As an example, I am giving mine to the CBSI. I'd ask each and every one of you to visit our Facebook and LinkedIn page to watch for watch my video as well as other videos from council chairs who are encouraging investment to uh, in their areas respectively. Other short things where you can have impact and now is go ahead and sign up for the 2025 AETC in Louisville, Kentucky or the annual international meeting in Toronto. This will help further your network and also increase the impact in the society. On the long term, 
we would ask you to think about being a regular supporter, make it a habit, uh, do small amounts on a regular basis, which is easier to, to um, fit with your in your pocket. And it also continues to help build our society. Next, I would try to be an ambassador with your organization. That is, we would like more ambassadors with their companies to, to advertise to their companies the benefits and the values of a long-term relationship with ASABE. This will be part of the ambassador program we're piloting through the foundation this year. Or just get involved with the society, specifically take the chance to participate with CBSI and AMAA. These are strategic initiatives in the society that need technical folks to help them change the future. And last but not least, uh, we would ask members to consider us in their estate plan. It's a great way to perpetuate your support even after you're gone. And there may even be tax advantages for you uh, that may would make it attractive for your estate. On all these short-term and long-term ideas, we'd be providing more, we'll be providing more information in the future. Please be on the look for it on the webpage and through the social media. And no matter how you participate with the society, I would like you to know that the society, society leadership, all the trustees, the councils, the committees, the local sections and foundation, we're all here to support your development and help you change the world. If you have any questions on how to do that, please reach out to Liz or myself or any of the trustees on either of the society or foundation board. We'd all be happy to help you. With that, Liz, I think uh, I'm done and I'd be open to questions. Sure. Before we jump into questions, I just wanted to share an update on our past president's challenge, oh, which is great. extended beyond a day, right? Giving Tuesday is the day after Thanksgiving, but we're accepting donations 365 days of the year. But until December 31st, they'll be matched dollar for dollar up to that $75,000 mark. And right now I'm happy to share that um, we're 52% to the goal. So this has gotten a lot of really great momentum and I just wanna say thank you. And we're able to designate these gifts to the funds that are nearest and dearest to your hearts. So thank you very much for that. All right, I think we've got some time. We've got plenty of time for questions. Looks like we've got a few in the chat. So the first question, is there a timeline to get to the $50,000 mark, the endowment threshold level, once the fund is initiative? Great question. Um, there are three types of funds within the foundation. There is There are capital funds, and those have five years of lifespan to spend. So those are in and out, quicker term projects. And then we have two types of endowment funds. One is the fully fledged endowment fund, which is the $50,000 threshold. But we have an endowment and process fund that you can start with less than the 50, as well as work with me on putting together a strategy for how to reach that $50,000 mark. So there are a couple different options. And again, this speaks to, we wanna paint the picture for folks who are coming to AIB and would be part of this impact on our future so that, that they're not having to do the heavy lift on determining which type of fund would best work for their situation. So I'm happy to have that conversation individually with anyone. And Deepak, thanks for posting the link to our past president's challenge page on the website. And thank you to the council chairs who've done videos for that. And it's been really fantastic. We'll start to see a bit more email communication coming out in the next week or so, leading up to the actual day of Giving Tuesday. Other questions that have come in are my donations to ASAB tax deductible. Yes, please confer with your accountant. This is dependent on your itemization threshold, but we provide receipts for every gift that includes that language with our EIN. 
Could I ask the question by voice or do I have to type it? Go ahead. Uh, this is Brahm Verma. So I appreciate this summary that you all provided. And I am very aware that over the years, the foundation has been blessed with many contributions by dedicated members. My question is that there are tremendous opportunities for ASAB and the foundation to get resources and revenues with institutions, organizations, industry, and others beyond ASAB members. What What is the current thinking on your part and what is the strategy or actions, if any, that you are planning? Thank you. And fantastic. Nice to meet you, Bram. I've heard fantastic things about you. And so thank you for your service and support of the foundation and society over the years. Maury, I'll just take this one. Um, okay. So we are working with EO6, which is the liaison committee between the society and the foundation to develop this ambassadors program. Thanks to Maury for coming up with this idea. We're putting some strategy behind EO6 prioritizing on an annual basis what our top funding needs are. From there, I will work with those groups to put together a budget to create a fundraising goal and develop a story that we can then tell to various stakeholders. Prospecting, as you mentioned, Brahm, can come from a variety of sources. The stakeholders can be anyone. And so we'll be really utilizing the networking bandwidth of our ambassadors to reach out to companies we already have connection with and new prospects as well individual corporate grant making organizations. And so really taking this and uh, one bite at a time and building this strategy to reach our goal. And also tailor that story with an understanding of what the stakeholders interests are, especially in corporate world that align with their values and goals. The, the, issue and has always been to make certain we have a coordinated methodology that we get an expert in a company or an organization or a foundation who is the primary expert understanding their timeline not ours theirs so that we can better sink into what is the right time to ask what is the right time to to push what is the right time to listen and an ambassador who's intimate with those organizations is that person who understands that from a company view organization foundation. We have to leverage that. And then we need to give them the right information so they understand what are the current hotspots, opportunities within ASABE, the society, so that we can connect those. And as you all know, we don't want to have too much cross communication where we talk past others or have five people uh, talking, which generates confusion, generates uh, miscommunications. So that's that's some of the key elements of this ambassador. Casting. It's a lot of work. And it counts on it really counts that we have a champion who wants to interface with an organization. Uh, and as you know, today we have champions who are at, at the John Deere side in case and echo and, and the main equipment, but we need to increase that to many more domains. Brahm in the CBS, we need to find more champions to interrelate with to help bring the message back and forth respectively. Does that answer the question? I I think there's still a lot to be. You have to think a lot about that. I, uh, I am following some of what you're saying. I'm trying to imagine how it will be operationalized. Uh, and that is something I'm sure that you all are working on, but that is the scope of the pilot project we are doing within the foundation is to put meat 
on that idea and to flesh out how it could work with different organizations. So we so, work with a smaller group to begin with. And then our hope is to develop the processes, procedures to a better level, and then roll it out, keep expanding on it in future years. So, so may I make a suggestion as a pilot uh, project? You could take one of these two initiatives, maybe CBSI, and develop a campaign around it. Yep. And identify numerous other organizations that are interested in this and and reach out. And, and that pilot will help us learn as to how to go about with other targeted groups. Uh, my experience has been that, especially lately with CBSI, but even before, that we have not reached out to other entities that would very much be willing to support what we do, provided we can uh, provided we can provide them clear understanding of the kind of contributions we make and that we can make with them. So that's just a just a thought process that I share with you. Good thought process because that's in the plan. Uh, could I follow up on that? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm Liz, I don't think I've met you either. I'm Jim Jones, University of Florida. Uh, Brahms compadre in much of the development of the uh, CBSI. And I wanted to follow up his uh, question with, with another question myself. I mean, there are uh, people who uh, have a lot more knowledge maybe than the present officers within CBSI. I mean, Brahm and I have rotated off, for example, but I'm, I'm wondering if you're trying to set, set up some task forces or committees or something to, to help you brainstorm the connections and, and, and all that might be pursued in some of these special projects. And I really like Brahm's question uh, too and, and liked your answer too. Uh, Liz and, and Maury. But anyway, I, I, how will you engage uh, members interested in this? So currently, I've got some communications out through EO6, and I also want to tag in a question that came through the chat from uh, Bob Gustafson. So thanks for asking this about how the foundation is selecting projects to do under the foundation rather than the society. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, and I'll circle back and answer both questions, I work for both. I am in, in resource development strategy for both society and foundation. EO6 governs that liaison relationship between foundation and society. We are both after the same vision. So at the end of the day, if we've got a CBSI project that has a fund with the foundation, but also is a strategic initiative under the society, we can develop that strategy for fundraising that encompasses all of those nuances. So I'm reaching out right now to the chairs of those current committees to ask the questions, what are your funding needs? For me, taking a look at a budget that's itemized and I can understand what you're wanting to spend those dollars on and then what's your story? So we can take as an example, meetings, something that we all well know very well, a convention center space. That's a budget line item, but that's not impacting the world. It's the work that's done within the meeting, within that convention space that's impacting the world. And that's how we need to tool that language to reach out to those various stakeholders. So it's become a both and conversation. Society and foundation coming together, working together to develop this strategy, and then making sure that we're relying on our policies and procedures for how we're booking those dollars, making sure if donor ha donors would like to have those uh, dollars designated to a specific fund that that is honored, keeping track of donors who are giving to specific funds so that we can turn around and talk about how their dollars helped with that meeting that helped with this outcome production and closing that loop on communication. Well, I, I guess if I could just follow that up, that still doesn't really get at going to the broader 
ASABE uh, membership for people that, to, to identify people who are not necessarily in the leadership positions in those committees and groups that you talked about. And that, that to me, I think is, is a lost opportunity if you don't really identify that and, and, go, and go for it. Uh, and well, thank you for that. Of, if I could just interrupt the prospect yeah. list, that's what you're talking about. And yes, we are gathering that prospect list. Okay. These are oh. folks who have supported us in the past, maybe folks and folks being stakeholders, right? So this could be corporations or grant making organizations or individuals. And they've supported us in the past, but it's been a while. So we considered their relationship a bit of lapsed, or we've got some of these these big bell and whistle foundations that are nationally, internationally known. Right. And we want to put that on our wish list, but we need to have a relationship in order to knock on that door. And well, so yes, we are definitely working on that prospect list. As well. I guess that's exactly my point because I think a number of us in the society have relationships already with some of these World Wildlife Funds or the Smith Foundation, which mm -hmm. just now you know provided the fifty thousand dollars for the uh, mm -hmm. for the summit. Uh, and so I, I think it, it would be good to go beyond just the usual suspects. And I think that's a lot of mm -hmm. what uh, Brahm was suggesting in his question as well. But uh, to the extent that any of us can help you mm -hmm. identify some of these people and all, uh, please let us know because we're really keen. And I was pleased to see that Maury uh, is, is giving money and <laughs> donating money and it's going to CBS, CBS. <laughs> So I would do the same. To follow up on that, Jim. Just because we have the mechanisms, we also need the relationships, right? Exactly. And and so we need this. If the CBS leadership is not the right group, the leadership has to tell us what is the right group. And and we, we cannot be the ones. Yes, we could go stir the pot. We could go look, but it has to be aligned with what CBS wants to achieve in their mission. And we want to be able to communicate that to those outside groups. Without that storyline of, of need, it's, it's, it's one thing. Yes, we can go and ask, please give us money. And they will say, what for? <laughs> and we will say, uh, well, it's our CBS group wants it. So our storyline, our successes within CBS have to be aligned and give us that content so that we can effectively ask because yeah, we just don't want to misstep also. Yeah, the, the knowledge base in CBSI leadership right now is still, is still evolving and, and being developed. And so it just and seemed like they're with them at the same time, Jim. Okay. Well, I, that that's good. I, I'm, I'm really pleased with what y'all are doing and appreciate the fact that you've organize this uh, webinar today. Very, very useful. Uh, Marie and Liz, this is Lalit. I was just uh, uh, wondering what is the progress on a targeted uh, messaging material for this CBSI campaign? Do we have any update on that? Unless I missed it because I, I joined a few minutes late. No, well, a great question. Hi, thank you for joining us. Um, in the process right now, I, I'm participating in the leadership team with CBSI to, to be a part of that conversation to get a better understanding of how to craft the fundraising goals and story. Um, yeah, so I think, as you may know, there's a lot of momentum with CBSI. And if we mm -hmm. have really a professionally done effective messaging piece both uh, video and maybe even hard hard material i think it'll help the leaders and even the ambassadors as they approach people who express some interest in the cbs as we have seen uh, it would be very very useful for those people who are trying to make contacts and raise funds and mm -hmm. establish asab's position in this hard work that has been going on by Brahm and Jim over the last several years. So I think this is somewhat urgent, in my opinion, that this be done quickly and this be done professionally. Yes, absolutely. And we are in the process of EO6 has endorsed 
CBSI and AMAA and ATAC and AIM in 25 as our priorities for 2025. And so now I'm reaching out to those groups to say, let's get that story together. Is that video? Is that printed materials? Yeah. And then, yes, absolutely, yes. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. We had a question come through the chat about Scopa Foundation uh, being considered uh, that of public interest. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I would love to see ASABE synonymous with doing good in the world. All of the work done by our ABEs is just fantastic. And I want to make sure that we can communicate that to the, to the general public. And contributions are tax deductible depending on how you file. So please reach out to your accountant to get precise answers on that one. We had another question come through the chat. We talked today about ways to give money to the foundation. Can you talk about how and where you distribute the money and how do we ask for money for something we think is worthy? So this ecosystem we're building of assigning priorities to projects helps us direct our efforts, but we will always accept, gladly accept dollars to support anything within our purview. Now, as I've joked with Darren before, if someone comes to us and say, says they want to build a zoo, I'm going to have to have a different conversation with them and redirect their dollars. And I know that's an exaggerated example, but it speaks to, we want to keep this strategic and we want to work with donors and meet them where they are and, and be the conduit for the impact they want to make on the world. The second part of your question, how do we ask for money for something we think is worthy? If this is the question of, I have a pro I am an ASCB member, I have a project that I think is really innovative and I want to ask for foundation support, we are working on painting the map of walking folks through that process. And they come to us and say, I've got this really great idea and we can work with them to say, I think that's an excellent fit for giving back. I think that's an excellent fit for keys. I think you should coordinate your efforts with CBSI and have that conversation. So it's, um, again, that full ecosystem of informing our donors of opportunities to make impact through these projects that our members are dreaming. Thank you, Deepak, for the reminder. Renewal of annual membership is a great time to make contributions to specific funds. It absolutely is. Thank you so much for everyone who's already been doing that. Uh, you can also find all of the different funds on our website. Each of them have a donation link next to them. If you're interested in becoming a monthly donor, that is a very cool way to make investing in ASABE, ASABE Foundation a habit. And we also have some other information on our website about ways to give that uh, take into consideration a bit more sophisticated investment tools. And if anyone has any questions about any of those specifically, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to have a conversation about how to meet your goals. So I have another question, uh, which mm -hmm. actually emerged out of a CBSI, but is not really related with CBSI. Uh, we experienced that uh, our work led to having some agency or some group donate half a million dollars to do work in CBSI activity to SAB. That half a million dollars was essentially like a project, funded project. So my general question is, what is the role of foundation in inviting members who would, who would be willing to develop a project that is funded by agencies or organizations that will bring money to the foundation, contribute to the overhead and identify new members. What is the position of foundation on this account? We actively will support that and build relationships hopefully that will entice that. But uh, if you're talking back to the example from this past year, right, with the that, that was actually considered a subcontract type of a relationship. 
and it went into the direct operation uh, in terms of the administration of how that worked. But the foundation will be out reaching out, but just the the it won't be just the foundation when we think about these sort of relationships. Uh, it is the society and the foundation working together. So building these relationships has to be congruent and in line with each other. Whether it's a short, this last example was a short-term sub one year event, right? And, and where the foundation's really focus is for those long-term events, the longer term endowments, the longer things, we want both. We want the short-term impact elements and we want to look for the long-term elements that perhaps we can get other endowments rolling with those relationships. But when you develop the relationship, I don't think they care if it's short-term or long-term. They just want to know where is the money going to go to and how will it impact the future. So we have to set that up for them. And I don't want the foundation to be exclusively thinking only for long-term projects. I want them to think for long-term and short-term type of thinking elements. I don't know if that really answered all your question, Ram, but that's that's uh, part uh, of it. My, my, my comment on that would be that, uh, that as an example with this experience we had this last year, uh, we would have both short-term and long-term effect because there are new individuals that we identified who would potentially uh, could become member of ASAB or certainly have become member of CBSI. So there is a long term, there's an overhead that comes with it that provides funding for other things to do. So I think uh, I'm just trying to understand because this is the first time, it's, and I've been a member about 65 years, so this first time I know that we did something like this and what have we learned and what is our position in the future, both in the context to the foundation as well as the society. We're developing <laughs> and we need everybody's help. Yeah. We're honestly, we're doing things that we haven't done before. And it, we all know that it takes time and relationships do not happen with a point contact, right? It takes multiple contacts to develop the timeline. I think all we're trying to say with today's event is we have structures in place that are, are good, but we don't have all the processes yet. And we really need to learn uh, with some of these key uh, relationship people. And the faster we can build, find those relationships, the faster we can move. But I don't want to set an ex expectation out there that you're going to get your Two hundred or three hundred thousand dollar in CBS tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to take us some time. However, if you know of someone who's interested in that type of <laughs> gift for an initiative we already have in the works, we are happy to have that conversation. Yeah, could I comment as a past president of the foundation? I think one of the things that philosophically, I hope I'm correct in saying this, is that the foundation is not separate from the society, that anything the foundation does is in support of programs of the society, but it's not necessarily really a program of the foundation. And I think awards is one that's been tricky over the years here that mm -hmm. to, for a period of time, we got to the idea that the foundation was operating the awards program. No, mm -hmm. the foundation is there to help financially support that, mm -hmm. but not to create things independent of the society. Mm -hmm. And that is yeah, still the thought process today. So we how we how we support the society is we have to be more in sync with where CBS is and where AMAA is at and some of the future initiatives. And, and it will take people from those initiatives to help us find those resources to help. But we've got the structures in place to support that within the foundation and society. It just, uh, we have to be open to a new thought process of outside of our domain. We've been mostly internal over the years, mostly, right? 
And this, this is a new thought process. And Jim has always told us we needed to go find other money because the stock market will not support us only. Jim, we hear you, remember you, and we think about you every day. <laughs> I hope I didn't squelch any questions. <laughs> I don't have any coming through the chat right now. Any others? We've got a few minutes left in the hour. I'm going to leave that chat open. I just want to reiterate our message today. Thank you so much for your time. We truly appreciate it. And the key takeaways, your, found, your ASAB foundation is well-managed stable and growing. And our future is in these relationships that we've been discussing today. So I encourage all of you to continue to be engaged, whether that's through financial support, participation on a committee, ideation around bringing the mission of ASADE to more stakeholders, especially external stakeholders. And we're really doing great work. We need to tell our story more. And if you have any suggestions or value add to any part of that conversation, please reach out. We want to we want to take that feedback in and be able to create this story that's going to raise all boats. This is from my side, thank you all for coming. Uh, it's always open. Questions, points, concerns, help would be greatly appreciated. So if you think you've got great ideas, please let us know. We're all ears. Thank you. This is Jim. I guess this Jim you were talking about. Yeah, Jim. Hi, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys moving forward the way you're moving. And uh, I know it's a big challenge to find out and find more people to uh, to work with us. But uh, this is the route that we have to uh, have to head down the furrow we got to plow. I guess that's how I describe it, because <laughs> our society is important. And I think we get more important every year. So. Thank you, Liz, for your commitment to uh, to help us out. And Mar Mari, really thank you for your leadership. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Mary and Liz. Appreciate it. Thank you. With that, I think we're done for the day. Thank you all, and have a great afternoon. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you. Bye now. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Nice job, Liz. Thanks. You too. I think it came off okay. I think so. But we got who I thought we'd get. Good. The, well, we didn't get many newbies, I don't think, but uh, it was good. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they can the next thing, okay? take the communication and spread the word. Thank yeah. you. You bet. Have a good one. Bye.